Hello Ableton lovers, this is Freddie Frogs, Certified Ableton Trainer. I'm a producer, a sound engineer, a technician, and I've worked with people like Above and Beyond, Shy FX, Damon Alburn, or Asian Dub Foundation. As an instructor with Point Blank, I've developed all the Ableton courses here at the college and also the performance course online. This video series will give you an insight of what you can learn on a course with me. This is the third video in a series of tutorials about dummy clips. So we've already seen how this silent audio clip could help us in creating follow actions for our session view or even to create transitions for our performances. Now this time a slightly different technique with MIDI clips in order to trigger preset or patch changes in Ableton Live. So at first I'll demonstrate using Massive from Native Instruments and I'll then move over to the chains within the racks in Ableton. So once again, this is a performance technique, so I'll try and simulate this scenario by playing a few audio drum breaks as a backing track. So I'm going to go for quite a pounding vibe on that one. Let's play the first loop, the second one, and the third one. And let's now play the bass line on top of that and change the patch in real time. And let's change the sound now. So the sounds for these bass lines came from Massive here on that track. This is a synthesizer from Native Instrument pretty good one if you ask me and the program changes the sound changes were initiated by these two clips now these are MIDI clips and purists probably wouldn't call them dummy clips since they are not silent audio clips however I consider them as dummy clips since they do not trigger MIDI notes or even sounds and instead they merely use as support to program to set up a program change. So program changes are a specific type of MIDI messages that enable us to trigger sound or patch changes on hardware or software synthesizers. So you'll need a MIDI clip in Ableton Live and at the bottom on the left here you'll find the menu to set up these program changes. You'll find that this first clip sends program number 12 whilst the second one sends program number 19. So how is this set up within Massive? Let's open the interface and in the browser section you'll find here to the right hand side a program list menu. You can build your own program list using your sounds and dragging them into the list like so and you can then save this program list. Each of the sounds get allocated a specific program number and you can have up to 128 sounds within one bank. Now let's observe how Massive reacts when I trigger these clips. See, the sound gets instantaneously and automatically changed for me. And this is pretty smooth while you're playing, no click, no glitch. So this is much better than loading multiple instances of a very processing heavy instrument like Massive. One instance of Massive is enough to trigger many different sounds. So now let's move on and implement the same principles over to Ableton Live's rack so we can stay within the realms of Ableton. So let's load a brand new instrument rack like so and grab a few sounds from the Ableton library. I'm going to take the first one that passes by. See, I need to load these sounds within the chain section of the rack and I can load as many sounds as I need in there. Now, the instrument racks have a specific window here called the chains. This will let us distribute the MIDI signal among the chains accordingly to the position of this MIDI selector right here. So let's set the first chain so it responds to MIDI messages all the way from 0 to 63 and let's move this second one over so it responds to number 64 and above. 
great let's now select the MIDI selector and create a brand new MIDI clip over here let's unloop the clip so the message doesn't get re-triggered every time the loop passes by and let's now write the clip envelope to automate the chains so the first clip will send a message zero right there let's duplicate that clip and in that second clip let's move that chain selector over to 64 like so so let's observe what happens on the chain selector here when I trigger these clips the first one sets it to 0 and the second one sets it to 64 so now let's play a sound so I get this sound when I trigger the second clip and that sound when I trigger the first clip so once again, we can achieve something that just could not be implemented without the use of dummy clips. And across this series of tutorials, we've seen the power, the potential behind this specific technique. And I think we all need to use dummy clips one day or another to work with Ableton Live. <laughs>